What's up, CS students? It's Keisha, and it's really nice to meet you. And I'm super excited that I am here to tell you about the final week of on. Unboxing. If you've been with us for the past two weeks, then you know we have been unboxing who the Holy Spirit is and how we can live the Christian life with its help. I believe we can actually discover how He wants to use us in the mission to expand the kingdom and let others know about who God is. And we believe that every student can be empowered by the Holy Spirit by unboxing these abilities. And the first ability is be empowered with boldness. Come on, say it with me, boldness. The first ability we can receive from the Holy Spirit is boldness. Jesus told his disciples before they go into all the ends of the earth, they need the dynamis of the Holy Spirit. And if you notice that word dynamis is the root word that we get dynamite from. Imagine that, dynamite, explosion. When Jesus says this in Acts 1-8, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. He was referring to the power the Holy Spirit gives. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be bold. The definition of bold is someone who is confident and courageous. But why do we need this gift of boldness? Ah, per, I'm so glad you asked. It's to put Jesus on display everywhere we go. Boldness is fuel to our faith. It takes boldness to lift up your hands in worship. It takes boldness to take Jesus into our homes, our schools, and our close friendships. Apart from the Holy Spirit, many of us will be too afraid to, to stand up for truth, too afraid to stand up for what's right, especially if it means getting picked on on our peers and appearing uncool to the people we're trying to fit in with. We need boldness. And the second ability that when we unbox the Holy Spirit is that we are empowered with gifts. Guys, I can tell you a time I literally did not like that I didn't have a voice like Beyonce. I thought, you know what? If I work on my voice and get some voice lessons, I would be the next top star. Ugh, but I didn't get that gift. Instead, I felt like God really equipped me with the gift of being hospitable. And if I'm being serious, sometimes I'm like, eh, that's such a lame gift. Like, why can't I have the gift of singing? Why can't I have that? Why do I have the gift of being hospitable? And I think for some of us, we compare and contrast our gifts. We think one gift is really awesome and great while the other gift is hmm, lame. And this is precisely how the Corinthians felt in the passages we're about to read. You see, the author Paul didn't want the Corinthians to think some gifts are better than others. That the gift that can get you on platform with a mic in your hand is somehow better than the gift that makes people feel loved and included, or the gifts that makes our home feel more hospitable. Here's what I believe. That means every Christian has gifts from the Holy Spirit. Listen to this, in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To the other, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and the other the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message from the Spirit of God or from the other spirit. And still, a other person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while the other is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all of these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. And the purpose of these gifts are not to show off what we have, but they're here to help each other. When we fully operate in our gifting, we unlock a new found freedom. The third ability that we have to unbox with the Holy Spirit is empowered to live free. Now, 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The verse is a powerful statement to you and I that God does not want us to live in bondage. And for many of us right now, wherever you're at, you would say that you have given your life to Jesus. And that's true. Praise God for that. But the truth is, 
you can be safe, but still enslaved. And here's what I mean. There might be some areas in our life when we have kept hidden from other people, the pain, the trauma, the bondage, the habit you can't break free. Yet, the truth of the matter is, God knows. There are some mistakes, sins, and strongholds that have kept you feeling stuck in the mud. However, the scripture is clear. The Holy Spirit brings freedom. And freedom helps us break free from the chains, our habits, and our hurts that will lock the God potential living inside of us. Freedom is the place where we can experience the fullness of God's glory. And can I tell you, students tonight, wherever you are at, freedom is available for you. Now, it may require you to get tough and confront the hard truths, but at the end, of it, it's so worth it. At the end, it's so worth it for you to be free. And with the Holy Spirit, you are empowered to be bold. With the Holy Spirit, you are empowered with giftings. And with the Holy Spirit, you are empowered to live free. And the bottom line is, students, <laughs> we all need the Holy Spirit.